Shalom, Racha, and welcome once again to Mitzvah of the Week, brought to you by Parasha Study Plus, a division of Tanakh Study. This week's Parasha is Parashat Bo. We will be discussing the Korban Pesach and all the facets that surround it. Uh, the Mitzvot to be covered will be the Mitzvah of slaughtering the Pesach, eating of the Pesach, how to prepare slash cook the Pesach, the prohibition for leaving meat over, from the Pesach, prohibition of breaking bones of the Pesach, prohibition to remove meat from the Pesach outside of the group, and individuals who are disqualified from partaking in the Pesach offering slash eating ceremony. We also have the custom of eating roasted meat on Seder night, which we will touch upon once we uh, get to the appropriate slide. So let's get started. We start with Sefer HaChinuch Mitzvah He is Shechitat HaPesach. It's an actual mitzvah. Lishchot biyom arba'a asar b'nisan ben ha'arba'im to slaughter on the 14th day of Nisan in the late afternoon. Se tamim zachar ben shana. Se tamim meaning an unblemished uh, se, which is a male lamb or, or, or kid. Uh, that is a ben zachar, sh- uh, sh- a zachar ben shana, which is a one year old male. Uh, o gedi, which as we said, bebeta behira, and the sacrifice happens in the temple, and it happens based in groups. If you look at Rambam, the laws of Korban Pesach. There's so many different laws about the Haburot, how many come in at a time, uh, 30 people at a time, then 50, they change it, change out the 10 that didn't have the ability to come in before. There's so many different laws, uh, not for the scope of this uh, Shi'ur, but you slaughter it. It's supposed to be done in the late uh, afternoon. What is the inyan of this mitzvah? It is shemit kabetzim anashim Israel. People from Bnei Israel they gather the chaburot in groups. Ve'lokhin min hashuk o mi betam gedi echad o se tamim zachar ben shana. They take this lamb or this kid, this male that is one year old. Ve'shohatin oto ba'azrat bet mikdash biyom yadalid ben arba'im. And after that, ve'har kach la'erev uchlin oto. Ben Kulam Achar Machalam Shemitzvato Leochlo Al Hasaba, which means that after you had the meal, then you eat the Korban. It is eaten while a person is full, and that's we, we say that uh, we commemorate that with uh, the Afikomin uh, on Seder night, which we eat uh, at the end of the meal. Also continuing in this mitzvah, mitzvah he of the Shechitata Pesach, what is the Shoresh, the essence of this mitzvah? So that the Jews remember forever. The great miracles. It is in order to remember all of these mitzvot. And that's going to be a running theme through all of the separate uh, uh, mitzvot for Korban Pesach. Is to remember <coughs> excuse me, the nisim and niflaot of the exodus from Egypt. And it venoheget bizcharim when it kevot bizman abayit in the time of the Beit Hamikdash to slaughter the Pesach it, it applied to both men and women. Ve'aover aleha b'mezid ve'lo asa Pesach hayav karet. This is very unique in this mitzvah. Anybody who did not prepare the Pesach and do all of the nuances and, and partake in the Pesach b'mezid and did not do this on purpose is hayav karet to cut off from the nation, and it is only. Uh, one of three sins, Shebezidonan karet ve'en shigegatan hatat, meaning when you bring a shogeg, in this case you do not bring a korban. Why? Because these were uh, these were these uh, certain mitzvot, and it is mitzvat korban pesach megadef, right? Someone who uh, curses out uh, Hashem in uh, w- 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 using the name of Hashem. He's a blasphemer. Umevatel mila and does not uh, say does not do a brit mila for their son does not circumcise their son. So these are two two of these are mitzvot ase the korban pesach that we're discussing and brit mila. These are two mitzvot ase that get karet and that that's unique to them. So it's just an interesting point that we need to bring up when we're talking about shchitat pesach. The next mitzvah is eating the besar the besar pesach eating the meat. 
את סבר החינוך מצווה ו', ויחור בשר הפסח בליל חמישה עשר בניסן, once at the night comes, now it's the 15th of ניסן, על פי תנאים שבכתוב, which we'll discuss, as it says שנאמר, אכלו את הבשר בלילה הזה, ואכלו את הבשר, they ate the meat on this night, and it's talking about the 15th. ונוהגת בזכרים ונקבות, והעובר עליה בטל עשה, if a person fails to eat this, then they, they violate this מצוות עשה, הוא כלל גדול בכל התורה, and here צוות החינוך lists for us a very important כלל, בכל התורה, לקור שאומר שיבטל מצוות עשה שכופין אותו בדין, אם יש כוח בידם עד שקימנה, right, they're going to be שכופין אותו. So what does that mean? Here, there are some mitzvot ase betin. Let's say the person, he slaughtered the Pesach, he took it, he sat in the group, but he just didn't eat it. He didn't fulfill the eating. So here, you have mevatel mitzvot ase, and any time the bet din can get a person to do the mitzvot ase, kofinota, we force them. We actually, uh, you know, uh, coerce them is the word that we'd like to use in order to fulfill this mitzvah. So some people, you know, they're lax with mitzvot aseh. Ah, it's just a mitzvot aseh, can't get malkut. But really, uh, if you see from the sources here, quoted by Sefer HaChinuch in Ketubot Pevav, Cholim Kof Lamed Bet, we see that if the betin has the power in their hands, then they must force the people to do that, people who are, who are, uh, who, who are re- refusing to fulfill the mitzvot aseh. How do we prepare the Korban Pesach, and how was it supposed to be prepared back then? So Sefer HaChinuch, the next mitzvah, mitzvah Zayin, is Shelo Le'echol HaPesach, in quotes, Na Umvushal. So what does that mean? There are two ways that a person cannot eat the Pesach. Uh, the way is something called Na. Na we will discuss, and actually that's the quote from the Pasuk, that we'll see in Shemot, Perek Yud Bet, Pasuk Tet. Al tochlu mimenu Na, it must be roasted on a spit with a flame actually touching. Roasting means there's no liquid agent between that's being used to cook the food. So like, for example, pasta, that's called vishul, because you have the pasta, and inside water, you're boiling the water, and the water is cooking the pasta. Sili esh is roasting, like a barbecue where you put the meat on the grates and the flames are directly touching the food. That's the liesh, that's how we have to cook it. Na, right, unvushal means na is a type of raw cooking, which is not ra'ui la'achila. It is impossible for a person to eat it. It's cooked a little bit, but it's not It's not edible for people. So we'll read that right inside here from Sefer HaChinuch. So we says vze perush na. This is what it means when it says na. Shabasar sheitchil bo maaseh ur. So the 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 ur is the flame, the fire. It started already to cook. And it's la meat. It's cooked a little bit, roasted a little bit. The eno raui laachilat adam. And it's not raui for a person to eat. It's not uh, edible. Adain nikrana. It's still called na. So again, you'll only get malkut if you actually started the cooking and then ingested it. But if it was totally raw, it's not in the geder, in the, in the parameters of this pasuk. But any this isur Torah is... Uh, it is done uh, by derech uh, klal. So uh, anything that is uh, pro- uh, is prohibited, the Torah generally anything said that is not roasted in the fire. So uh, again, that's uh, that's the mitzvah. Bottom line is it needs to be roasted, and we don't leave it raw or even a little bit cooked, and we do not uh, and we do not cook it in a water agent, which is that's called bishul. So we don't cook it in inside of a liquid. Continuing with this, Sefer HaChinuch Mitzvah Zayin, again, Shelo Le'echol HaPesach Na Mushal. So what's the shortest of the mitzvah? Again, as we mentioned, Lishor Nes Yitziat Mitzrayim. But there's another aspect here. Vezehu Shinitztavinhu Le'ochlo Seli Davka. Specifically, we, we, we eat it roasted. The fish Kach Derech Bene Melachim Vesarim. Sali, Because not only that, on Leil HaSeder, when we are commemorating our freedom, we want to point out that we are a free nation and we are like kings. 
So as kings, they would eat, uh, roasted meat was considered a delicacy. So that means it's, the, it's a choicest of foods and it's extremely tasty. So therefore, we wanted to make sure not only that when we were eating on Leil HaSeder, that it was going to be something uh, that, that mimics how they ate it in the Midbar. The reason why they did that was because this was now that we were ready to be B'nei Horin, and we were ready to become free and like kings and like ministers. So therefore, this was the food that they ate, roasted meat. Milevad, and there's another reason here that, again, Sefer HaChinuk quotes Rambam in Moreh Nebuchim, She'achilat hasali, the, the eating of roasted meats, Right? It shows also the haste in which we left Mitzrayim. It took a, a, a shorter amount of time to roast meat directly on the fire than to put it in a pot and, and add liquid to it, which is Bishul. So therefore, two reasons that we have for the mitzvah to not eat it now in Vushal, and rather to eat it as sali, uh, uh, as roasted as sali, is because a because we want it, that's the choicest of the meat, the best way to eat it, and that's how kings and ministers ate it, and that's what we are when we leave Mitzrayim. And the Rambam's reasoning in Moreh Ruchim, which it also shows about how quickly we left Egypt, because there was no time to uh, cook in a pot with a liquid agent. Here at this point, I just want to digress, and I promised uh, talking about the minhag that we have on Leil HaSeder uh, regarding the shank bone, the Zeroa, as well as cooked r- cooked meat or slash roasted meat at the Seder for Shulchan Orech, for the actual meal. So I'm reading from Shulchan Aruch Or Haim Siman Taf Ayin Vav Sif Aleph, and Maran very clearly says, Makom shenahagu le'echol sali belele pesachim ochlim, makom shenahagu shelo le'echol, it, it, this law is based on custom. Now, what is the custom in our community? Do we eat roasted? Uh, do we eat roasted meat? Again, roasted would mean barbecued meat. Afalel uh, haseder, and I'm adding myself because uh, you know uh, there's not a lot of time to go through all the poskim. Also, what about eating the zeroa itself? So there's roasting the zeroa itself as a barbecue, and there's also roasted meat as a barbecue, versus uh, meat that is mevushal, that is in a that is in a liquid. So there are many different minhagim. Maran clearly puts this to a whatever the yomakom is. Follow. Sali, do not eat roasted if it's not your custom. You can eat roasted if it is your custom. What's the gezera? Gezera shema yamru pesachu. Maybe you'll say this is the exact korban pesach, and as we'll see later on here, we alluded to before, you're not allowed to eat this uh, this pesach outside of the Bet Hamikdash. So maybe a person actually slaughtered an animal, designated it, and said it's the korban pesach, and now you're eating kodashim outside of the azara. Bahutz ubchomakom asur lechol se sali kulo keehad. Because it looks like eating Kodashim Bahutz. But pay attention to Maran's Lashon. Here it seems that Maran is only forbidding, and if somebody actually took a se, a lamb, and cooked the entire thing whole in its shape that they used to do in the times of the of the Beit HaMikdash, and they cooked it whole and brought it to the table. That's really where Shohan Aruch comes and says that that's where the Isur is. So there are many different customs. As we mentioned, there's two things here. There's the zerawa and there's actual food that you brought. Some people, the Ashkenazim, they avoid everything altogether. They won't even bring no roasted meat and no cooked meat sometimes. Uh, they, they won't eat, you know, to get, as like almost like a gezera. And they will, they will, instead of roasting the shank bone, what they will do is, is they will boil it. They'll boil it so that it's just enough uh, uh, levels of edible, and it's just mivushal, and they'll leave it, and they won't even eat from it. That's the Ashkenazi custom. There are many different Sephardi customs. Uh, uh, most, uh, uh, if you look at in Matim uh, and Asher, and and uh, when we learned it with with Rabbi Sain, Rabbi Harold Sain, and Rabbi Aluf, is that the custom in uh, in in Halab was that you were allowed to do both. They actually had. Roasted meat, and if you wanted to roast the zeroa, you would also be allowed to roast uh, the zeroa. Uh, that, that's uh, that's been documented to be the custom, in, the accepted custom in halab. Uh, also, 
uh, 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 um, Morris Arking uh, also did a nice piece on this in, uh, in the SCA uh, Minhag of the Week. Um, I'm sure you can look it up on, on YouTube. Uh, uh, it was one of the earlier ones, if I'm not mistaken. And, and I believe his conclusion was the same, that in Halab, uh, you are, uh, the custom was that you can have roasted shank bone and also roasted meat on the seder. Uh, if people had different customs at their own table, then you can follow that. But the, the, the custom was to make sure that if you wanted a roast, you could do roasted meat. And um, uh, uh, as, the, as the custom of Aleppo, that's for Lel HaSeder. Uh, my, me personally and my family, we do a boiled uh, shank bone. Um, Again, following in our uh, uh, some as uh, slightly Ashkenazi uh, uh, roots and, and 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 influence, but the boiled shank bone. But we did have roast. We do have roasted meat for shulchan orech. Now continuing, it's the as we've mentioned. Now that we mentioned that that's what Maran was worried about to make sure, especially with bringing the whole lamb to the table. The next mitzvah is Sefer Ahinuch Mitzvah Tedvav Shelole Hotzi Mi Besara Pesach Chutza. Do not bring it outside of the temple. You're not allowed to uh, to bring it uh, to, to bring it outside. And again, it states it's this in Shemot Shemar Lo Hotzi Min Abayit Min Habasar Chutza. It, may, it had to stay in the place where the Haburot, uh, where the Haburot gathered. So we have Sefer HaChinuch, Mitzvah Tet Zain, Shelo Lishbor Etzem Min HaPesach. person is not allowed to break a bone of the Korban Pesach. The way that we, now what was, the, what's the reasoning? So Sefer HaChinuch says, First of all, the pasuk, you're not allowed to break any bones of it. And the shortest of this mitzvah, again, as we mentioned, is also this kor nisem mitzrayim kimo shekatavnu ba'acherot, like, like Sever HaChinuch wrote in the other aspects of Korban Pesach. V'gam zeh, geza mina shorish haniskar, she'en kavod libnei melachim v'yotze eretz legarer ha'atzamot u'shovram k'klavim. Do not break bones like you're a dog looking for every morsel that's on the that's on the uh, on the korban on the carcass. You have to. It's not nice. It's the the way that you says that we're only eating the animal whole, and we're not going to do it. It's not proper for the sons of kings and for these sarim to eat in that way, right? The only way they do it is. For the people that are very hungry, kim the aniyeh am hare evim, or for the actual dogs. So it's out of the respect. That's the practical reason. And again, because we are kings uh, on this night. I've heard many derashot that also say that it was an actual, you know, sticking it in the face of um, uh, of of the mitzrim that they say, look, that this was their gods. We took it on the tenth, the seh, and now they get they get to see. You. Imagine all across Mitzrayim, you would see just uh, you know bone carcasses of the of their gods, and it was really and and Hazal do bring that down um, as as a nice musar uh, musar point. But here the the, the shortage of the mitzvah is because it's not proper for kings to eat in that fashion. We're not allowed also to leave over anything from the Pesach and save it for another time. That's mitzvah chet and sefer ha'chinuch shelo lehotir mi besara Pesach. You're not allowed to leave over from the meat of the Pesach. And again, shene emar, what's the pasuk? In, in again, this week's parasha, velo totiru mi menu ad boker. Do not leave it overnight and don't leave it uh, to go overnight until the morning. What's the shoresh of this? Again, this kor nise mitzrayim. Again, we're kings. We don't need to save. Oh, let's save a little for tomorrow because who knows when we'll be eating. You're a king. You're a melech. You're going to have enough uh, enough uh, to lead for you uh, 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 as much as your heart's uh, uh, desires. And then Sefer uh, continues. Right? You should you should burn it as it is something that as if it was something that you did not desire. If I don't want it, I just burn it. I don't need to store it. I don't need to leave it. And again, it's all to make sure that we're showing ourselves as we are bene horin and we are kings. Now, the closing mitzvot of our mitzvah have to do with who is allowed to eat the korban pesach and who is not. There are separate 
uh, there are separate pesukim that that do exclude uh, different categories of people from partaking in korban pesach. Sefer Hanuch mitzvah yod gimal shelo naachir min pesach li Israel meshumad. Israel meshumad means a heretic. He is uh, he either sins with idolatry. He rejects the the exodus from Egypt. Uh, the person is uh, basically uh, you know a habitual sinner. A uh, fancy English word for that is an apostate, and he. Why should he eat from it? Uh, again, we say, "Kol ben nechar lo yochal bo." Right, as it says, no foreigner is going to eat from it. So the, the mechiota uh, quotes uh, that's quoted by Sefer Hinuch says that this foreigner is really a Jew whose actions have become foreign, and we're. We're trying to say this is this whole night is about the breath of the Torah and Emunan Hashem. So Sefer Ha'inuk says, "In Ra'ui Shnachim Mimenu Lemishu Hu Hefech Mize." You know, it, it's not Ra'ui to feed from the korban, feed someone from this korban who believes the opposite. If you don't believe in Yitziah Mitzrayim and you don't believe in full Emuna about about Hakadosh Baruch Hu and His miracles and and and, and receiving of the Torah, uh, etc. Well, and, and even worse, if the person's the idol worshiper, he's a Jew, but you know he, he's worshipped idols, it's called Meshumad, then he does not, he is forbidden to eat from the Pesach, and we do not uh, feed him from the, from the Pesach. Uh, also, we see in the Gemara that this was, uh, th- th- that this is discussed. Sefer Ahinu says that this is also logical. This is a svara, svara hu I don't need, uh, right, the Gemara sometimes says this klal about, uh, about many different mitzvot, that it's a svara, it's logical, and we don't need other proofs. Sefer Ahinu adopts this too. It's logical if a guy is not going to be joining us in the same mentality, he does not partake in the korban. Similarly, the Ger and Toshav does not uh, partake also uh, in, uh, uh, in, this, uh, in this mitzvah. So now, what does this mean? It doesn't mean the Ger, the convert. Obviously, the, the, gel, the Ger that is fully converted is one of Bnei Israel. However, we, so we have to ad- identify what is the Ger and the Toshav. So, Sefer HaHinuch Mitzvah Yedal, it says, Shalom HaAchim in HaPesach the Ger Toshav. Shneemar, Toshav Sachir lo yochal bo. This Toshav and Sachir shall not eat from it. The resident, or literally a Sachir is a wage uh, worker, should not uh, eat from it. So what is a resident? It's a Ger Toshav, which is, he's keeping the mitzvot, and he's uh, uh, from the, he's a mem- member of the other nations. He takes upon himself, oh, I'm not going to worship idols, and... Uh, um, uh, etc. But he and he'll and he'll leave it, and he'll live in Eretz Israel, but uh, uh, with permission from us. But he's uh, gonna eat from, uh, let's say, maybe Eved Mina uh, Minachai or uh, not Eved Minachai. He eats uh, Nevelot or Trefot, and uh, so that person, the resident alien, does not partake in it. What does it mean, the ger? The ger means a sachir who ger shemal velo taval, which is important. He did not complete his conversion process, which means that he had the circumcision, mal velo taval, but did not complete his dipping in the mikveh, and that is essential for somebody to complete their conversion. So anybody who is in between, who is that uh, that status, maybe they had their circumcision, but they did not yet dip, they do not partake in the Qurban Pesach. And finally, An Arel, someone who is uncircumcised, did not yet receive the circumcision, does not eat from the Qurban Pesach. Also, in this week's parasha, we have the uncircumcised person does not eat from the Qurban. That's it for us for the mitzvah of Korban Pesach. Uh, for those of you who are traveling this winter vacation, have a safe uh, Nisi Atova. And again, make sure that we understand the Nisim and the Niflaot that HaKadosh Baruch Hu did for us and appreciate one of our greatest mitzvot of commemoration of the Exodus, the Korban Pesach. Shabbat Shalom.